If you believe it, just worship the Lord. If you believe that everybody, everybody attached to your life is safe, we're safe in the arms of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for safety, Lord. We were saying, we kind of looked at a few different parts of it. Um, we looked at what a watchman is physically, right? Not so much in a spiritual realm, but what a watchman is in a physicalness. And so... A watchman can be someone on a tower, right? A physical building, a tower built up high. And that's what it was in the Old Testament, in the old days. My God, look at who just walked in the door. Praise Jesus. Hey, God. Hey, hallelujah. My God. <laughs> Minister Angel and his wife, Tammy, God bless you. My other brother in the... <laughs> My other brother, from another mother, as they say, raised up, raised up right here with us. We thank God for him. Come on in here. Amen. So we were talking about being a watchman, a watchman in our wall. And so what we're supposed to do, or what a watchman does is that, that you're on this high tower and you're going on. And, and this is, I'm just doing a little bit of history of what we've already done. So you watch, you watch out for the enemy. You're watching for what's coming forward. That's the physicalness of it. Watching, being a watchman on the wall, on the wall, on the wall. So that when you see something that's unusual, or when you're peering out and you see something that's not right, you sound the alarm, right? That's the watchman. That's what they do today. They have it in the army, in the services, on the White House. The White House, if you go, they have watchmen. You may not be able to see them. Oh, but best believe they're there. They're there. So that's the physical piece of it, right? And so what a watchman is, a watchman is someone who's, who stands strong in their faith. The watchman is someone who's looking, when we're talking about the spiritual aspect of it, we're looking in the spirit like the prophet said. God used the prophet of old to be watchmen. They used the prophet of old to be watchmen. And so the prophet of old, what they were supposed to do was sound the alarm as far as what God was saying to them as a watchman. 
So what they did is they stood in their post. They stood their post. It may not have been the physical wall, but they stood their post in the spiritual wall, meaning they listened to what God was saying. They got with God so they can understand what it was that he wanted to say. He, they prayed and they fasted and they interceded and they did all this for the people of God. So when God began to speak to the prophet, then the prophet can go and sound the alarm. For the people. So then the people would know what God's expectations were. To fall in line. To get it together. To come together. Whatever it is that God was saying to repent. Stop doing what you're supposed to be doing. Let's get lined up. Whatever it is that God wanted to say. He used the prophet in those things. In those times. Right? You with me? Amen. Amen. Okay. So we had read back in Ezekiel about what the prophet did, Ezekiel the prophet, as he warned the people. And he said, look, being a watchman is not a light, L-I-G-H-T, task. Nope, L-I-T-E. Let me make sure I'm saying it right. It's not light. It's not a task, Miles, that you take lightly. Being a watchman is a heavy responsibility. Remember I said last week, heavy is the what? Heavy is the head that wears the crown. So there's responsibility. You just don't come and just stand, and then God speaks and you go and you give. There's a responsibility behind it, meaning that you can't be just doing anything, meaning if God gave you something and you decided not to give it because they was getting on your nerves, I'm going somewhere. And God told you to speak to the people, but the people didn't listen the last time. So you said, God says, look, if, you, if I tell you and you don't tell the people and the people die and perish because you didn't do what I told you to do, I'm holding you responsible. Yeah. With me? But if you do go and tell the people what I told you to tell them and they choose not to listen, then I don't, hold, I don't hold you responsible. You good with me. You will live. They will die. So being a watchman, it, it's, it's sort of like in a sense of being in leadership. It's leadership. And, and I told everybody before, we're all ministers of God. We all have a responsibility, and we all agree, even though you weren't here, Nutmeg, from last time, but what we all agreed on is that we all have a responsibility being a watchman. It is not just the apostles' position to be the watchman. It's not just the prophetess or the prophet's position to be the watchman. It's not just the evangelists or the pastors or the teachers' responsibility to be the watchman. It is all a we, as my mother liked to say. Responsibility to be the watchman. What type of watchman we can't have, what we kind of spoke to last week, is a blind watchman. Because who wants, imagine, just imagine. Imagine you were all hiring for a position of a watchman. Just kind of stay with me. And the watchman came in. He came in and you at your desk. And so you say, how good is your sight? Well, I'm wearing these bifocals. I don't see too well. Sometimes it's a little blurry, but I can do it. Okay. How much you know about being a watchman? Well, I read the first two chapters of the book that you gave us before the interview. I didn't get to the rest of it. Okay. Okay, so, so far, it sounds like he's telling us he's blind, he's ignorant, because he ain't got no knowledge. And then, how do you like socializing? Do you, are you able to communicate information to people? Oh, I really don't like to talk to people. <coughs> That's a problem. Prophet, if, that, if I was doing that interview, I would tell them, thank you. I appreciate your time. But at this moment, we don't need your service. <laughs> Who wants a blind, mute, and ignorant watchman? Everybody gonna die. 
You put him on the wall because you need somebody? If you choose to put a mute, ignorant, um, blind watchman on the wall just because you need the space filled, that's a problem. Because people will die. So we can't have those type of watchmen. The word of God went forward this morning, this afternoon, earlier in the day, and said, look, God says, look, you're, 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 you're distracted. You need to get back on your post. And we're wondering why our lives or why things can be so chaotic sometimes. And I get that God allowed things to happen. I understand that. But he also gave you choices to make. And there are things that happen in your life that don't have to happen if you choose to be the right watchman and if you choose to make the right choices as the watchman. We all have a responsibility. We all do. Whether it's on your job, as whatever position you hold on your job, whatever, if you're, if you're the husband of the house, if you're the wife of the house, if you're the child of the house, if you're the leader in the church, whatever it is, if you own a business, you all, we all, you all have a responsibility as a watchman. If you own a dumping company with garbage, if you pick the garbage up, if the city picks the garbage up and just dump it in your yard, that's not being... That's not doing the job in the correct way. The same thing spiritually. If God has chosen and called you, then why are we not doing the job in the correct way? As a watchman. But we want the watchman's reward. And I'm not saying that it's the whole church. And I'm not just talking about new life. We're talking universal. We're talking to you at home, too, that there's a responsibility. God, God didn't, didn't give birth to people to just do the blame game. I know what Adam did. I know he tried to blame God for the woman he gave him. I get it, but that's not how it goes. It's about accountability. Being a watchman means I'm accountable. Being a watchman means sometimes I'm going to do a job that I don't always want to do. We discuss this, people. Being a watchman says, hey, look, I'm here, and I'm on point for God. Not for Pastor Al, not for Pastor Tracy, but for God. We did a poll, and we said, hey, how many of you, you can't see here, and on, uh, you're on camera, but I'm going to ask the question again, and those of us in the room can look around. How many of you had said, told us that God called you to lead? Raise your hand. Look around the room, people. Look around. There are several hands raised up in here. Not everybody. So that's why I'm saying it's not for everyone, but as a leader in the leader realm, but everyone has a responsibility. You can't say, God didn't call me to be a leader, so I'm not a watchman. The devil is a liar. He's a liar. You still got a responsibility to show up. Because if you're here, you're born again, you gave your life to Christ, you're a watchman. That's it. <laughs> that's what a watchman does. We figured that out. It's to simply do what God told us to do. <laughs> that's it. So from the start, I had, we were looking at four items. Number one, I asked the question, who were the watchmen? Someone appointed by God. Simple. Ezekiel 317, son of man, I am appointing you as a watchman for the people of Israel. When you hear me speak, give them my warning. Simple. Simple. But some of the warnings when God speak were heavy. And everybody don't like to be the bearer of bad news. <laughs> That's one thing. As a watchman, you got to be a bearer sometimes of bad news. Come nobody bring me no bad news. No bad news. Remember that from the whiz? But we have to. And not say, God says he didn't call it bad news. He called it a warning. A warning means you have the opportunity, Chris, to get it together. You get time to get it right. Bad news is when it's already done. Bad news is 
telling you somebody died. They're gone. It's done. But there's a warning that's saying that there's something happening. And this is the command of God and what he's telling us to do. Get it together. Lord. Repent. Turn from your wicked ways. Seek me. Humble yourself. Yeah. All the instructions that he's been given since the beginning of time. The next question. What were they watching for? They would literally be peering forward. We talked about this. And for those of you who weren't here when we did, peering forward means they were leaning in. They were watching off the towers, looking for any unusual activities. In the spirit realm, that's what we do. We peer in to the spirit, meaning we spend time with God. That's what the peering in part is spiritually. We were peering forward, looking out into the distance, on the watch for messengers, unusual activity, and most importantly, any sign as the enemy was approaching. And then we went and we warned the people. Then third question, why did they watch? Out of obedience to God. As a watchman of God, which is a very, very important job, they follow God's order. And I'll say it again, or people die. It was that simple. And for those of you who may say, well, dang, people just dying. I'm not just speaking about a physical death. We need to understand that. We're talking about people will die spiritually, meaning they won't get what God has for them if you don't do your part. God says, I've drawn them with love and kindness. He's using you as the love and as the kindness. Oh, my God. He's depending on you and he's depending on me to be obedient to the position he called us to. And what happens is that when the position gets hard or when it gets difficult, as I said this morning, we want to avoid it. There's no avoiding when God says something. There's no avoiding it. You can act like you avoiding it. You can act like he didn't say it. But that doesn't negate the fact that it was said. And that you were not, that you are responsible, that you were not in your position to give the heed. Oh, I'm going to get to heed. That's a powerful word. If you don't know, heed, H-E-E-D, is very powerful. <laughs> So we already know we don't want no, we don't want no blind, mute, and ignorant watchmen. Can we say amen to that? Amen. Because I was like, no. I did like seven interviews within two weeks. We were hiring for this position. And we said one girl came in in her, in her, her, um, her um, resume. Impeccable. Yo! Yo, her resume prophet is. Boom, boom, boom. And you know what the Spirit of God said to me? Listen to see if she talk like what her resume say. Listen. Because I could put anything on paper. <laughs> but when he, she got before us, and I asked the questions, and I had her resume on this side of the screen, and I'm looking at her on this side of the screen. And I said, just so you know, I'm going back and forth, up and down, because I'm taking notes, and I got your resume right here. And when we begin to ask the questions, she sound nothing like her resume. Nothing. This, I, and, I, and the reason I'm telling you this is because we got to be careful when you're going forward who goes in position. You got to be careful who you allow to be in your space. And not saying that people can't be in your space and that God ain't calling you to go to people who may not understand and may not know, and he does, right? But I'm talking about as a leader, as you're going forward and as you're building up the kingdom of God, you got to have good discernment. You got to be very mindful of who you allow to come in and own a thing. Shoot, as who, who got business or want to have a business? You just ain't going to hire anybody because you need the spot filled. You 
want somebody to come in that's going to take care of your baby. <laughs> Anybody ever hired a babysitter before? Okay. You want somebody that's going to do it just like you. You know what they ask me? Is there another Tracy on your team? You know why they ask me? If there's another Tracy on my team because of the quality of work I put out. When was the last time your boss asked you if there's a on your team? Yeah. My apostle and my prophetess said to me one time, well, I wish we had more of her. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Because of the work. Far from perfect. I didn't know it all, but I had the willingness to be on my post. To be the watchman that they needed me to be. <laughs> so as spiritual leaders, watchmen in the Bible are entrusted. What are they entrusted with? They're entrusted with a great responsibility to keep watch over God's people. And that's the part I'm talking about. Well, what do you mean? They know God's people. How do you know there's no God's people at your job? Who told you there was no God's people at your job? Because they're not performing or, in a sense, they're not doing what you consider to be God's people. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Huh? God's people. What? What is the God's people uh, A list? Sometimes we have that judgmental list where we say and think how people should act and people behave because we say this is what a Christian should do. Even if they haven't given their life to Christ, they still belong to God. Because he created. <laughs> do we understand? God is the creator of all things. Just because they haven't given their life to Christ yet, doesn't mean there's not an opportunity. And if you're not in position, then they can miss the opportunity. So it's your responsibility. It's your responsibility to keep watch over God's people. You got to guide them. You got to work with them towards wisdom and righteousness. They see that not in Jesus who will come down here and just walk before him. He done that part. He does it through you. Are you righteous? Are you not cussing? Are you not drinking? Are you not lying? Are you not stealing? Are you not on your job? In your home? Are you using your power of a husband as an authority to lord over or to lord up? As a wife, are you using your position to control and manipulate or are you encouraging and being the head, being the assistance to help me? As a child, are you falling under what the parents are advising for you to do, whether if you're 30 or 12? Whether you home or not, as a roommate, are you gravity and linking out with your brother or your sisters and praying? Well, they're not doing it with me, then you do it with them. Do you come together weekly and meet for a Bible study outside of this services, this edifice here? On your job, have you noticed someone who's struggling and saying, hey, how can I help you? Being led by the Spirit of God. I can't bring everybody in my house. I just can't. The girl lives in Georgia. So what we did is we came together and we helped her out. Watchman. A watchman is a verb. You're doing. It's action. You're moving forward. There are times, glory, when you're called to pull back some. And that's only so you can go back to get filled back up. Because how can an empty cup give anything? So the watchman has to go back. Ramon, he has to go back. Back to where? His old, no, not his old stomping grounds. Not unless God has charged you to go back there. But you go back with the God of God. In his spirit. To get refreshed. He does it in cycles. Look, I'm off to the next person come and stands up and be the watchman. Come on, somebody. When the word was going forward, Brother King got up and he was a watchman. Surrounding. Loving.
loving on people, being kind to people, giving people God even when you don't feel God yourself. How do I do that? Because he's in you. You know how to pull from God. You're the very one. We got men of valor here. Virgilio should pull from God as he's pulling from God to get courage to get the rest of the men here. God, how do you want me to get them to come? How do you want me to get the sore group going forward? How do I get them here for Sunday training? Who are you inviting? Watchmen? Watchmen have a responsibility to deliver the warnings and the messages to their community. <laughs> a community is a, is a big word. Some of us may think it's the community right here in this yard, and maybe so at times. But what about your neighbors? Who's your neighbor? Hmm. Kenny McClary has always asked that. Everybody's my neighbor. Where are you going? What are you doing? What are you actually watching? <laughs> I know it's hard. It don't feel so good to the flesh. And I'm glad it doesn't feel good to the flesh. Because the spirit is truly happy right now. The spirit is rejoicing. The spirit is yelling. The spirit is saying, yes, yes, give me more. Yes, I want to. I can. I'm able. I'm equipped. But see, what happens is the flesh is bad because it can't do what it want to do. And that's the biggest part. When it comes to being a watchman, the watchman is going to require sacrifice. The watchman, being a watchman requires sacrifice. Anybody willing to sacrifice anything? You mean I got to go on a cross too? No, you got to bear your cross though. You got to carry your cross. <laughs> you got to love the cross. Jesus did the ultimate sacrifice for us so that you now can walk in his steps. I hope this is really getting through. Because as the man of God said, the prophet said, look, it's why things are, we're getting closer. I don't know what date or time to give you, but I know it's getting closer and closer and closer. And for some of us, we got more years behind, I say that, than in front, but I truly believe I have more in front because I have eternity. <laughs> I got eternity. So I'm going to live forever. How about you? The next question we had asked. Let me get to my notes here. Not the next, yeah. The watchman has the responsibility for guiding and protecting their community. They are called to be like shepherds to the people, providing guidance and assistance when needed. It is their duty. You hear what I'm saying to you? It is your duty to protect their community from harm, whether the harm be physical or spiritual in nature. Watchmen must use their God-given wisdom, their God-given wisdom and discernment to navigate the challenges of leadership and ensure that the community remains on the path toward righteousness. Simply put, hang on your post, man. And not lean into, what's the scripture that a lot of people like to quote? Proverbs 3, 5, 6, lean not to your own understanding. And that's the problem. We're leaning too much, prophet. Man, it's, we're leaning too much to our own understanding. And that's why we're not focused. That's why we're distracted. And God is calling us to be better. I don't know what it is in your life where you're at and what God is telling you that you need to get on board with, with him, but this is the warning. Here's the warning from the watchman. Get ready. Get with God. Repent. Be sincere. And if you're struggling and feel like you just can't stop, then you tell him that. God is bigger than that. He's not afraid you. What you, you think you're going to run him off? And he's going to go hide under some heavenly cloud? No. God is right there with you and will help you. But you got to go to him, man. I can lead you to the water, but I can't force you to drink it. You got to be the one who want to drink it. We've been led to so many other waters. 
We can look at our path. I've been led to the water of prostitution, led to the water of stealing, led to the water of drugs, led to the water, all those other waters, doing all those adultery, all those things. We've been led to so many other different waters that got us nothing and left us thirsty. But the water we're trying to get you to has a watchman. It's the water of life, the running water, the water of the Spirit of God that never dries you up that will always keep your palate fresh, that will always give you the spiritual needs to be able to be strong in his power, be able to stand and endure in the challenges. Shoot, the very person you help could be the very thing that you needed for your own self. Somebody called me last night. I was driving. I was on my way to get our dinner, Pastor Al. And they called and we were talking. And at the end of our conversation, I was about to say, okay, God bless you. And the person said, can you pray with me? And my flesh was like, hey, I'm trying to get my food up. But I started, I said, yeah, no problem, I pray. I'm going to do it. And as I began to pray, I was driving, right? And as I began to pray, I had to pull over to the side of the road. Because this was something that she needed, but I really began to realize it was something I needed too. And in the midst of praying, we was both blessed by God. I lifted my hands and I closed my eyes and I began to just cry out to him. And I felt a peace. Hey, God. I'm struggling in my body right now. I told you a few weeks ago I got news that was just news I never thought I would hear at this season of my life. But I got the news and I'm still struggling with some stuff. But God gave me a peace. See, the devil will try to knock me off my post as watchman. He'll try to bring devastating things and stuff to distract me, to keep me from being the postman that God gave me. Gave had me to be in the spirit realm, on the wall. Don't let Little Beard distract you guys. He's just going to the bathroom, that's all. But we got to stay focused. Somebody say, stay focused. Stay focused on what God is having you to do. There are people, I told you, that are attached to you, who need you. And if you're defocused, how are they going to get? Miles, you hear me? How are they going to get if you don't line yourself up? There's a bigger thing. There's bigger. There's bigger. God says, I made, you are made for so much more. And I don't know what you endured or what's happening or what's going on in your life. But God says there's more. There's so much more. And you feel like sometimes, I don't know, sometimes I think men in some way, and this is just my, this is just my, my thought on it. This ain't what God told me. This ain't what I'm sensing. It's just some things, just having some conversations that sometimes men have been built, beat down. And you be like, that's obvious because they have. But I'm talking about somebody close to you can sometimes just make you feel worse. And I'm not saying that's the case with you, but I know just having conversations that sometimes they can feel less than. And God is saying, you are not less than. You're more than a conqueror. He said, I called you for more than what you're doing right now. And I don't even know what you're doing. I don't need to know. But God knows. And I believe you know too that this is just not it. And all the chaos, all the nonsense, all the mess that comes in the midst of it. God says, look, let it go. Simply let it go. It was never meant for you to carry. It was never meant for you to have. He says, and it is, I get it. I know I've been saying things like, heavy is the head that wears the crown. And it is. There's so much expectation, especially for a black man. There is so much expectations. And God says, you're not to fulfill those expectations. I already got the plan for your life, Jeremiah. Oh, excuse me, Miles. He already got it. And he says, once you begin to link yourself back up with the plan that he has for your life, then things will begin to be smoother for you. But there's sacrifices and there are things that you have to let go that sometimes this piece you know what i'm talking about this flesh don't want to let go Shoot, man listen I, if i could tell you what i'm right now my flesh is like 
And God is saying, I need you to. See, I'm not perfect, Chris. Far from it. But you're a pastor in the church. Ah, he used the imperfect people. He used people who, were, who, who, who people counted out. He used, he used the ones that they left on the side of the road. The ones who were dirty and stink. The ones we, we some of us right now, be like, mm, I don't know. But God says those are the very ones because you forgot that you was just like that. <laughs> you don't remember how you once wasn't a watchman. You were, or you, you were, uh, let me say it this way. We forget that there was a time that even though he already identified me as a watchman, I wasn't operating as a watchman. I was operating in my false identity. False prophets, the false identity. I was operating as a drug addict. I was operating as an abusive woman. I was operating in areas that I shouldn't have been operating in. But those actual pieces that he allowed me to go through gave me the ability to be stronger as a watchman, to be able to discern, to be able to see, to peer over, to know, to warn that that's not for you. And there's some things, Miles, that are just not for you. Yeah, let it go. Let it go. They wasn't wrong when they did that song in Frozen, let it go. I won't sing because you'll be mad. But Watchmen, Watchmen, Watchmen on the wall. Sacrifice, responsibility, changes. See, that's the thing. See, God, God never changes. He's always the same. He's always going to be the same. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. But he evolves us. We change. We're different. You, I don't sell. We don't do. We're not selling our bodies no more. We're not smoking crack no more. We're not out there doing the tote tote no more. We ain't out there cussing everybody out every month. Now we're showing love and patience and kindness and wisdom. And, and, but sometimes, you know, the thought comes. I'm ready to knock. But, Chris, because of who I am today, see, I'm going to tell Miles and Chris, they used to call me Pastor Rage. She said, yeah, see? I was a very, very angry woman, bitter woman, ready to fight the minister in the yard right there. But God has changed me. And he's using me. He said, even all that, it still worked out for your good. Come on, somebody put your hands together because it worked out for your good. It worked out for your good. So we talked about the few things and I'm about to wrap it up. So the watchmen are accountable to God for their actions and decisions. They are called to be faithful stewards over the responsibility entrusted to them. What's entrusted to you right now? <laughs> What's entrusted to you right now? Chris, I want to say something, but I'm not. See me after service. Don't leave, okay? What's entrusted to you right now? Because one day you're going to have to give an account to what he entrusted you with. Remember in the beginning we were reading in the book of Ezekiel, and God warns us that the watchmen who fail, and I said this already, their responsibility will be held accountable for the blood of those who they failed to warn. So the last question I had on my list in the very beginning when we started this two weeks ago was what were they longing for? And I found that to be a very strange question about the watchmen. Because they were just, my thought was, but it was just longing to do what you said, God. But let's go to Psalms real quick, and we're about to end. It's almost time. It's 157. I want you. Psalms 103. Psalms 103. And I'm going to read it out of the Passion. Psalms chapter 103. Oh, and I'm sorry. 130. I had it backwards. 130. Psalms chapter 130. And I'm only going to read one verse. Psalms. Psalms. The book of Psalms. 130. Chapter six, uh, 130. Chap verse 6. Verse 6. And it says here in Psalms 130, verse 6. I long for you more than any watchman would long for the morning light. I will watch and wait for you, O oh God, throughout the night. Simply put, we were longing for God. Can you play? I know you're writing that down. We were longing. The watchman should always be longing for God. Longing for God. 
In our role as a watchman, we should long to uphold the truth, spread love, and stand firm in our faith. We should long to watch over our brothers and sisters, encouraging them in their walk with God. As watchmen, we are called to be proactive in our faith, alert to the movement of God, and protective of the spiritual well-being of those around us. Let us embrace our role as watchmen with diligence. Anybody embracing their role with diligence? It's quiet. That's okay. Faithfulness and unwavering commitment to God's kingdom. Check yourself right now. The old school song said, check yourself before you wreck yourself. But check yourself before you not only wreck you, but you wreck other people. Those list of things I just gave you. Are you being, are you, is the things that he entrusted you with, the people, the wives, the husbands, the kids, the job, the money, the homes, the cars, the ministry, what the vision, what did he entrust you with? What did he give you in the, what has he given you? Are you being good watchmen? Only you and God can answer that question. I can make assumptions. I can assume. I have some discernment. I'll speak when he tells me to speak. I'll let you know when he tells me to let you know. But I had to look at my own self. I'm on the news hearing that dogs and cats are being abandoned and tied to trees and tied to things. More than I've ever known it to be said. God entrusted you with that. See, we take, the, we take the simple things that feel like it doesn't matter, but that's the very thing God is saying. Can I trust you with the small things in life? I told a story one time about a white sock. And in the story, the guy was saying, I want more, God. I want more, God. I want more, God. I want more, God. But every day the Spirit of God was saying to him, pick your white sock up, pick your white sock up, pick your white sock up. And he would never pick the white sock up. And he says, if I can't trust you to pick up the white sock, how can I trust you with more? See, the white sock you feel is insignificant, but it's not. (laughs) The person you're ignoring, you feel, or you're not ministering to, or you, or is, is, is doing something to you. Well, could it be that it's doing something to you because God needs to change something in you? Could it be? That's how the apostle would say, could it be? The very thing that annoys you is the very thing he's using the person to annoy you so you can change and just maybe get closer to him. You got to answer that. And I pray you answer it right. But don't let the small thing keep you from being the watchman he called you to be. It's not insignificant. It's unusual for somebody to probably say the Spirit of God said, pick up the white sock. That's unusual activity. (laughs) Pick up the white sock so you can get to the next place. Pick up the white sock. Pick the person up. Encourage the person. It ain't pick, you know, we're going to pick the white sock up. But picking somebody up means to encourage them. I know, it sounds like I'm beating that dead horse. That's okay. Let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. And I know everybody, it's not for everybody. I get it. But I love, again, what Mark said last week in class. I missed his class this morning. It was a really slow morning for me. <laughs> and he said um, last week about the book. And we're ordering, we're ordering the, um, the Purpose Driven Life book. We got them. We hope and pray they're here for Sunday. But what he said was five, 15,000 times. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, y'all. <laughs> he read it twice. And he didn't really, you know, he read it. But not until, again, when we said, okay, you're going to be teaching class on this. And he went back. So this message may not get to you the first time. It may not get to you. This. You can actually go. Can I say it? 
If you are interested in this message, see Pastor Al. But I pray it marinates within your heart. I said a lot of stuff. And I don't know where we're going to go from here. The trail I believe God is putting us on, this is what I believe, is he's heading us towards holiness. Huh. Towards holiness. I mean, attitudes got, okay, we won't go there. But I'm going to have you again repeat a prayer. And this is a shorter prayer this week. And I don't want you to look around and see who's praying. Just close your heart and look to God right now. Just look to God and hear what he's saying. If he don't say it now, he will say it. You'll just be ready to receive from him. Everybody ready with your eyes closed and you're looking into your heart? I said, I'm going to hold your hand. I want to hold his hand. I want to hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. Y'all pray for us. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. So we're just simply going to say, God, I pledge today to take heed. Don't repeat what I'm about to say. But what he means is to be cautious be, and pay careful attention to. That small word means to be cautious and pay careful attention to. So again, I'm going to ask you to say, I pledge today to take heed to the call of being a watchman in our generation. Standing firm in your truth and shining the light of God's word in a world that often finds itself in darkness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. God bless you. You all are dismissed. I know people are ready to head out the door, but remember who you are. Oh, yeah, we wanted to see some people. Yeah. So let's, before you dash out, because you're going to miss your blessing, especially for, if you want to sign up for a turkey, Minister Tammy, we said we're going to give that one to you today. You're going to see Minister Tammy. And what that's going to cause you to do is that, remember for the men in the ministry, it's one turkey per unit. But if you outside the ministry want a turkey, we've already given out, what was it yesterday, Jenea? 43 turkeys have already been signed up for. So if you're looking for a turkey for Thanksgiving, give Tammy a few minutes and she'll put you down. Amen. God bless you. We love you. God bless you. Nick Augustino right here at the East Side Restaurant. We always have the complete full dinner menu. Knockwurst, bratwurst, sour broughton, potato pancakes, red cabbage, rice pudding, cream pies, all the desserts that Germany had to offer. I always do something different. Yes, I do. I brought seafood to the beer garden at the East Side Restaurant. East Side Restaurant, your German destination restaurant in Connecticut. Tiggy talking, tiggy talking, hoi, hoi, hoi. Hello, I'm Bill Meyer, board director for Nutmeg TV your local public TV station. For over 30 years now, Nutmeg has brought countless local events, municipal meetings, and programs to our TV screens. To continue this important work, Nutmeg relies on the support of generous individuals like yourself. So we're reaching out today to ask for your monetary support. Together we can continue to amplify the voices and stories that make our community unique and vibrant. To make a donation, simply visit our website at nutmegtv.com or call the office at 860 321-7405 for assistance.